We're back with another episode. We're back with another episode of Birds. So, and how are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing great. Well, you guys have seen this on Monday, so you guys may or may not have celebrated um, Valentine's Day. I'm so tight, I miss Valentine's Day. How did y'all make me forget Valentine's Day? Because I was going to film a Valentine's Day episode today at this moment. So I'm filming a little earlier this week. I'm proud of myself or whatever. So I'm like, uh, Brittany, by the time this episode go up, is Valentine's Day is over. And the people who don't fuck with Valentine's Day don't want to hear about Valentine's, Valentine's Day again. The people who did celebrate Valentine's Day and maybe they feel like they partnered in and do a good job don't want to hear about that shit. So you just missed it. Like, you got to wait till next year. So 2022, you will get a Valentine's Day special. I'm so tight that I really like didn't do a Valentine's Day episode. And the other reason why I'm tight because coming up with topics for, you know, a podcast is not easy. So I just feel like that's such an easy thing to do. You know what I'm saying? And I and I have the tea for y'all. Like, y'all gotta wait till next year. Stay tuned. Keep riding with the show. You get Valentine's Day next year. Talk to me nice. But as for me, I can't even tell you how my Valentine's Day went. <laughs> technically because i didn't even celebrate it but i could tell you you know what i was expecting <laughs> and then i guess next week i could tell you what actually happened but yeah so i am coming and becoming a whole entire adult just like a whole freaking like i can't take it so family's like Brittany, what do you want for valentine's day and i'm just like mm. Like, I really sat on my bed. I'm in my bedroom. <laughs> huh? The irony. And I was literally laying up, just looking up at the sky, trying to figure out what I want for Valentine's Day. Because I wanted something. Because he asked me. So I'm like, I'm going to take the opportunity to get something. And it's just like, I feel like, you know, Valentine's Day is very, very overrated. Like, it's super overrated. I feel like people just make Valentine's Day seem like this big entire thing. Like... It's so overrated. Like, okay, let's say your man put roses all over the fucking house and roses on your bathtub and shit and some candles, bitch. But, like, then what he gonna do next year? Like, what, they supposed to do that every year? Like, I feel like Valentine's Day is just, like, get me some flowers, maybe some chocolate, because I don't really be liking them chocolates, like, like that. Like, I only like some of them. Like, I don't even eat all of them. So, I feel like if you gonna give me chocolate, just give me the chocolate I like, you know? Like, so I'm just like... And then for me... You know, I have PTSD from Valentine's Day. Like, I used to be the type of person that was just, like, super, like, emotional on Valentine's Day. Like, when I was younger, like a teenager. Then I got older. I got used to not having a Valentine's. And I would just go to work or whatever. But I'm not going to talk too much about Valentine's Day stuff. Because you got to wait till next year. <laughs> That's mad funny. But for me, I mean, I, I don't know how to comprehend Valentine's Day. Because... Now I'm like over analytical because of last week, which I will talk about. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so me, my first Valentine's Day was for me. Me and him had broke up. Well, I broke up with him before Valentine's Day. I'm a stupid bitch. <laughs> so we didn't have, I didn't have Valentine's Day that year. Then the second Valentine's Day was last year and I don't really have recollection of it. Like I just thought I was like pregnant, like for real, for real. And I was being dramatic. So I think we stayed in. Like, I think we stayed in and ate. And then this year is, like, corona. So, I never really... And then those years before that, I was single. So, bitch, I'm not really privy to this. I mean, going out to eat. Like, we kind of do that stuff, especially in the summertime. Like, I like naturally going out to eat sometimes, you know. He can't stand it. But then when he get there, he loves it. But, I mean... I mean... For me, I just think Valentine's Day is overrated. Like, what are we gonna... What am I gonna ask for? Like... I feel like motherfuckers right now, y'all want to ask for these bags and designer stuff, but where are you going to wear it to, you know? I mean, I like to take pictures and stuff now, so I was thinking like, hmm, maybe I should ask for like a gift card for clothes, you know what I'm saying? But then the adulting in me, <sighs> I've been watching TikTok and I saw this thing, it's called the Little Green Machine. It's a called, it's a Bissell Little Green Machine. It's like a vacuum cleaner thing and it like could clean, like bitch, y'all... Put in little green machine hashtag on um TikTok if you have TikTok. And you probably can see it on Instagram because you know everything is a line, bitch. Yeah. 
she was cleaning the car with it. Somebody cleaned their bed with it. They be cleaning couch, like they be cleaning everything. Like I need that in my life. And I yes, that's something I probably could buy for myself. But it's like, why would I let him buy it? Because I need my money right now, especially with everything going on. <laughs> I need my money. <laughs> so I was like, I asked him for that. And guess what I asked for? Oh my gosh. I wanted an air fryer because all the girls are raving about the fucking air fryer, right? Like, oh my god, air fryer is the best, the best shit ever. Air fryer saved my life. Now I'm a chef. So I'm like, I'm about to get an air fryer because I heard it cooked the food fast. It's relatively healthier. And I see UPS outside and I just feel like you never know. It could be for me. Because <laughs> I've been buying and delivering, ordering stuff all fucking week. Anyway, moving along. So. I wanted the air fryer, but then I heard about like they have these things that have air fryers in it and um slow cooker and a pressure cooker and a sous rendezvous and a and a soup maker bitch. I saw one that had that they come in yogurt on the side. I was like, you know what, y'all gotta stop. It has to be a point where we stop. Cause I don't need a machine that makes yogurt and air fries and makes soup. That's too much. So I'm like, yo, if I'm get, I might as well not get a, just an air fryer because the air fryer itself is the price of something that does eight things. So I got a, like a crock pot thing and it has an air fryer. So it's like a five in one type of thing. I asked for that because that is so me. <laughs> so yeah, those, I asked, this is the type of shit I asked for. I did ask for a gift card, but I was, he was like, you asked me for too much stuff because I asked for a $300 gift card at that. Because I need clothes. Like, I need outfits. I need looks. 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 I think for Pretty Little Thing I asked for. Because, you know, Pretty Little Thing is cheap. So I could get mad stuff for $300. But he was acting funny. I don't know. He said he got me some thing things. We'll see. I really wanted... I want everything. <laughs> I'm the yeah, type of person that want everything. And I know y'all like... What you want to get? Oh, I asked for flowers. Well, I asked for flowers, but I don't know. We, I don't know. The funny thing is this episode is coming up the day after Valentine's Day, but I'm making this. I don't want to tell you what day I'm making an episode, but I did make it relatively early because I just wanted to like get things out of the way. I'm trying to be progressive, but I kept complaining about that. So I don't even know what's going to happen. Y'all like, oh, what you going to get him for Valentine's Day? Me and Femi beefing right now. So, I'm not obligated to get him anything now this year because he's, you know, we we, we going to do some stuff. <laughs> I don't know. Should I get him something? I'll think about it. I'll think about it. I'll think about it because, you know, we're still, you know, we're still in a relationship. I might surprise his stupid ass. Maybe I'll think about it. I'll think about it. But yeah, I'm just not used to the Valentine's Day thing. I don't, and then now that I'm with somebody on Valentine's Day, it's so funny because when you're single on Valentine's Day, it's like the end of the world. And now that I have someone, it's like, what the fuck are we, what is, what is Valentine's Day? Like that shit is hella overrated, y'all. If you was depressed on Valentine's Day, it was not worth this is. Like, I promise you, this shit is over fucking rated to me. I think it is. Like, I, I, I really, like. I think COVID made me realize it was overrated because I'm just like, number one, we don't have nowhere to go. And the fact that we, do, we don't have nowhere to go. Well, he's saying he think about going to Jersey. He's going, well, like, the fact, you know, let's say we didn't go to New Jersey. Let's say we didn't have a car. Like, what, what the fuck? We, gonna get, we, we could take the New Jersey transit. But it's just like, okay, we can't go out to eat. Like... Yeah, I asked for gifts, but, like, is it necessary? It, even if I feel like some girls might ask for like these Chanel bags and things like like you know non nonsensical stuff like all right maybe if you are a celebrity and stuff yeah it's a it's, it's a reason to get those things but when you kind of like you know regular juggler snuggler like me like okay I get a Chanel bag where I'm going to the supermarket like I'm confused it's nothing wrong with a Chanel bag to the supermarket mind you I'm just saying like I don't know like me and that's why it's so hard to for me to get ask for gifts from people I like stuff I know I need and that's gonna last and that I really really need or it's gonna save me money in the moment like things I really need like I like people to buy me things that I need to re-up on you know what I'm saying like I like things like that like I don't like things that's not like if it's gifted to me I'd rather have something that I know is gonna benefit me Though, you know, it's cool to get nonsensical stuff from people so that you don't have to spend your money on that. 
But I'm everybody has their thing. Everybody has their zhuzh. So yeah, I'm sorry I missed the Valentine's Day special. Ugh, I'm so tight. Or whatever the case may be. Because I, I could talk all day about that. Especially now, you know what I'm saying? And I don't know what happened on my Valentine's Day. Stay tuned. Oh, yes. I forgot to tell y'all. I do not have COVID. I did not have it. Because I did not bring it up last week. But I did not get COVID. My results came back negative. <laughs> so, yeah. I didn't get COVID. That was cool. The results took mad long. I started thinking I had it, bitch. Because we had a snowstorm in New York City. Like, the following day or that day. I don't remember. So the snowstorm kind of like just backed up everything. Like people didn't go to work, da da da. So my results took really long to come in, but they came back negative. So yay, I don't have COVID. <laughs> the lightning is on point today. It's really sunny today. Cause I feel like last week, my last week episode, it was a little dark because it was snowing that day. So it wasn't that much sun. So I'm just like, kind of like, yes, so the lighting. Ugh. Yes, 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 yes. I'm like pretty energetic today because I'm proud of myself that I'm feeling it early. That's why I'm so like super, super duper energetic. And yeah, today's topic, I was like, oh my God, I can't, yo, time really fly y'all because like when I put this topic, I put it here it, with intent and I'm just like, it's already that time, like girl. So we're going to talk about emotional strength. Strength. I don't know what the name of the episode is. You guys will know by the time this is posted up. But yeah, we're going to talk about strength and being strong and and just, just, you know, I, I could speak to it. You feel me? <laughs> you feel me? So I was like, okay, let me put this as a topic because, you know, we all care about this. You feel me? Well, some of us, I don't know. So, when I was looking into, like, articles about being emo um, being strong, emotionally strong, most things that come up are, like, the seven things people could do to be emotionally strong, people, blah, 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 whatever the case may be. So, I'm like, uh, that's not really helpful, but I did find an article that was like that, but it did have, like, a intro to the topic. So, what do we like to do before most topics? <laughs> We like to expand our minds. Expand your mind, expand your mind, expand your mind. So, in an article on Psychology Today, written by Guy Winch, Guy Winch, the squeaky wheel, okay. <laughs> Seven characteristics of emotionally strong people. I'm not going to read the characteristics. since I'm reading the intro. Okay, I'll give it to you, maybe. <laughs> so, emotionally strong people manage the stresses of daily life more effectively and recover more qu quickly from challenges and crisis when they arrive. Since emotional strength refers to a person's internal coping abilities, can we accurately judge a person's internal fortitude based on what we see on the outside? People culture, popular, sorry, popular culture often portrays emotionally strong people as quiet, stoic types who never complain and whose emotional expression during crises is limited to jaw scoring, fist clenching, and silent dramatic stares into the horizon. Any signs of emotional leakage expressing emotional distress in any way or tears, especially in men, is often viewed as evidence the person has difficulties coping and is emotionally weak. Such notions are not only incorrect but tremendously misleading. That's true. Emotional strength has little to do with stoic stoicism and even less to do with any momentary reaction. Rather, emotional strength is something that can only be assessed over time. By definition, it involves a person's ability to deal with challenges and bounce back from them, not how they respond in any given moment. For example, if two entrepreneurs invested five years in a startup that fails, which of them is emotionally stronger? The one who feels heartbroken and bursts into tears when funding falls through? Or the one who feels heartbroken but keeps their emotions in check? The answer is neither. It was a trick question. 
All right. So let's let's get into it, and I'll, I'll probably tell you the the seven things that they said. They said um, the the seven characteristics of emotionally strong people. So um, strength, strongness. What I liked about that article is that it talks about that. Um, emotionally strong people aren't people who don't react in the moment because those be the people that actually really be psychopaths you know what I'm saying sometimes no shade no ski because we all can react differently to things that we choose to um the reason why I top five <laughs> I'm mad I said top five the top reason why I want to talk about strength is because I feel like it's um Number one, I feel like the word strong, like everything in this freaking world lately, is like this word that wants to be canceled, especially amongst black women, and I understand that to an extent, and I'll probably lean into that. Um, number two, I feel like also people just like feel like it's not a thing to be emotionally strong. Like, I feel like people kind of embrace it, but they don't, like, if that makes sense. And I'll get into that. And, I mean, I, I, I live to be emotionally strong in some ways, in some cases, or whatever the case may be. So, the first thing I want to talk about is that I feel like strong is a word that people kind of want to cancel. And I get why they want to cancel it is because they feel like... You know, telling people to be strong or you're so strong or you have to be strong right now is kind of shunning someone's emotions. And I understand that and I respect that or whatever the case may be. But the thing is, is like strength is required in a lot of things, unfortunately. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like you can't really go through life without a little strength. Um, it, it takes strength. It takes um, strength to get through adversity and challenges and things like that. And it's okay to tell somebody to be strong. Maybe not in the moment. Not like when shit just pop off. Like, But it's like, I get it. Like, I mean, I don't. Like, it's like, before you say be strong, make sure you say, you could do this. Everything is going to be okay. Continue to pray. Be strong. Like, end it off with be strong. Don't put it in the beginning. Because it's like, it, when people feel like as soon as you say be strong, you kind of like playing they shit. Like, you're trying to say like, just be strong. Like, there's some light cheese. You could get through this. Like, be strong. Like, it's okay. Like, it's, it's kind of making it seem like whatever you're going through is light work. And that's not the case. That's not what's being interpreted here. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't want you to think that that's what we're trying to you know or whomever you're talking to is trying to portray it's like that they're trying to say like be strong or whatever also what i liked in that article like i said being strong is not all about not crying it's not all about not being upset keeping a straight face it, it like people like I, I don't even like that like when people like when shit happened, they be like, well, you know, things happen. Things happen every day. Like, it, it, make me, it makes me feel weird, depending on the situation. No, that's not being strong. That's being, you know, like, you need to get a therapist. To me, being strong is you can still cry in that moment. Just like he said, you know. And then after you done shed your tears... You done, I, I, don't, I don't even know what else people do. You know, whatever you do to cope, you still get up every fucking day and you just live your life. And when I say live your life, I'm not just talking about going to work. I'm talking about you literally will get up, make you some breakfast. You cook dinner every night. You clean up. You, you take a bath, bitch. Like, a lot of people don't know when you go through something so traumatic or when you go through anything that is is hurtful or painful you don't want to do nothing like and you may feel like that for a long time like it depends you know everybody is different like i know i've read women who've been through what i've been through and they just like i didn't get up for six months and i was just like Ugh. like for me at the time because i can't you know um 
you know, say how I will react, you know, in any or every situation, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, I still got up and did what I had to do, you know what I'm saying? And and, so for, and it's not that um I was trying to run away from anything. I just I wanted to. Like I felt like it needed to get done. You know, like I would get up and I would be like, I, I don't know. I didn't feel like for me, like I said, I got to be very specific in what I say because I, I don't know what's going on in the brain of somebody who doesn't want to get out their bed. For me, I didn't feel comfortable not doing anything. Like I felt like, okay, if something bad happened, now if I just sit in a bed all day, then I'm this this is making it even worse. Like you get what I'm saying? Like I'm 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 nobody, like I'm hopeless, I don't get up, I don't that's how I felt. So I feel like that's one of the ways to be emotionally strong too and just still get about your day is to realize like okay, if something bad happened. Now, if I sit in my bed all day, it's it's giving me worse energy. Does that make sense? Like I felt, I feel like if you like don't get up and do things, you kind of feel more hopeless. You feel like you can't even do nothing. Like you nobody. Like like does that not make sense? Like you just feel like I don't eat, I don't sleep, I don't shower, I don't do nothing. I'm bodiless. Like you. You like numb, like your body, you're limbless, like you're, 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 you're done. Like, I can't explain it any further. Like, so I just felt like, all right, something bad happened, but maybe I should get up and make some tea at uh, minimum. Like, I can't cook a full meal. I'm not doing that. I'm not about to cook pancakes, eggs, and bacon for some. Y'all could do that. Start small. You hear what I'm saying? Start small. Like, you don't got to go big because I know you don't want to get up anyway. So, to get up and then go sit up and try to make a pancake breakfast, uh, a big three, bitch. Like, come on now. Like, no. So, you know, I would get up. I make oatmeal. Instant oatmeal. Boom, boom, boom. Easy. Light cheese and tea. And then eat that and watch a sermon. Things like that. Just, like, build yourself up, you know, having strength. Um, The other thing is, too... Why I think strength is important is because I feel like people kind of sleep on strength. People kind of sleep on strongness. Like, because y'all want to cancel the word or because of your insecurities, you might feel like somebody is pretending or somebody is, um, somebody isn't coping as they should. Or, like, I feel like, for instance, like when people see people do stuff or whatever, okay, let's talk about that. So, this week, well, last week, because it's Monday, last week, um, an article came out that Lauren London was allegedly pregnant. And, you know, she was just with Nipsey Hussle or whatever, and Nipsey Hussle passed two years ago. Okay. So, for some, they're like, damn, she moved on kind of fast. Now, I, I, I'm, about to, I'm about to give y'all a lot right now, all in one. <laughs> Let's just get to that, number one, before I talk. Um, they was just like, you know, she moving on kind of quick, uh-uh-uh, like, you know, and, 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 you know, to each his own. For me, I feel like, number one, people move on, people grieve differently, like, people, everybody got their own time frame of how they do shit, period. Number one, if she was indeed pregnant, like, she says she's not, so we're gonna say she's not. Right? So, for me... I felt like, number one, she has money. She's pretty. She's a very pretty girl. Um, she's popular. She's affluent. Um, that's a recipe for you to move on kind of quick. Let's be honest. Because, like, you're already in a spotlight. Like, everybody knows you're a pretty girl, right? Because there could be a pretty girl in the world and she's not popular. So, we don't even know that, oh, my God, look at that pretty girl. Like, you know what I'm saying? So automatically, you know, men still have their eyes on her, whether her, her ex passed or not. Number two, I felt like, and this might be shady, her boyfriend died. They were married. He didn't put a ring on her finger. They were dating a while. And, and, and for me, you know, when things happen, you got to sit down and you got to start thinking about shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I want a ring. I want a wedding. I don't know if she's ever been married, ever been engaged. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and that's why I was like, uh, I mean, she got her already pregnant again, but maybe that man, if she was pregnant, let's say she was pregnant, hypothetically speaking, 
you know, that man would be ready to offer her a ring. Maybe he put a ring on her. You don't know. You know what I'm saying? He didn't commit fully to her, Nipsey. You know what I'm saying? And I know we, we talk about marriage on this podcast as well. You know, some people view marriage as not a commitment thing. It's not a big deal. It's just a piece of paper, whatever. But for me, if you if you saying it's not, uh, it's just a piece of paper, you know, they wasn't committed like that. That's just for me. So I feel like she she might have a certain energy to move on um, to y'all quickly, cause there's no timeline in moving on. Like to me, moving on too quick is like I I don't I don't really know honestly. I really I can't really speak. You know I I can't. I was gonna say maybe a day, like the next day. Obviously I don't know what people do. I would love to meet somebody who's moved on from grief in a day. You know what I'm saying? And like real grief. You know what I'm saying? But, um, back to what I was saying, because I was just like, examples, like, you can't really, you don't know the the b- backstory behind a lot of things. And, um, I feel like people kind of view strength as, like, this, some, some people, not everybody, like, it's fake, it's not real, or that's unhealthy, I don't like the way she's moving, uh, or he's moving, or are they doing drugs, like, what's going on, like, like motherfuckers just passed and they just getting up doing a thing again like yeah nigga like for some people the show must go on that's one of my favorite lines is like i always say that like for me the show must go on like it has to go on whether you want to take a break the show must go on and when i say the show i don't mean like a show i mean like your life your life your life is not a show it's a very real if it's a show it's a reality show but i'm just saying like Everything got to keep going. Like, whether we like it or not, it's going to have to keep going. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you alive, if you breathing, the bills don't stop, your health don't stop. Like, certain things that are so important, it just doesn't stop. And that's one of the top things you got to keep in mind when you, when you want to be strong. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to say... What is most important to me? Like, what is important? What is vital? And why is this vital? Why Why are these things vital? Like, if you got kids, like, can you, you, I, I, can you mope around all day? Probably not, because you got mouths to feed, you know what I'm saying? You got kids to feed. I'm not saying all day. Yeah, take your time. But don't shun nobody who's like... I'm gonna get up. You don't know. You don't. Yeah, yeah, I don't. You you sometimes don't even know the backstory. You know. Um. I know some people kind of like when I went through what I went through because I feel like I bring it up so much and I don't want to bring it up a lot. But I mean, it's my life and it happened literally like six months ago. But when I lost my child, a lot of people, and and a month later I started potting again, and then it's like six months in, bitches is just taking pictures and putting on makeup and just doing her thing. Um, and some people, you know, some like you're really strong. I think I spoke about this. I don't remember which episode it was, but yeah, I brought it up. But I don't remember which episode it was. But it was watch, watch all Brit says. <laughs> Link in the bio. Hello, but um, you know, people was just like, uh, I think she would be kind of funny. Like, is she even grieving? Did she want a child? Like, it's so many questions. Like, you know, some people just felt like, like I had people like kind of question like, why is this bitch like <laughs> she back with another episode a month later? I don't know. Like, I remember one day, like when the incident happened, when I came from the hospital. Maybe like a weekend, I was like, I want to pop again. Okay, cool. Had it been up to me, had I not really processed everything, I might have did it in about two weeks from the moment I brought it up. And I was like, you know what? Give yourself a month. You know what I'm saying? I didn't. I, I was like, so from the day I decided, wait, that don't make sense though. Oh, that do make sense. So it wasn't even really a month, okay? It wasn't a, it wasn't a full month. It wasn't a full month because I came back home. <laughs> oh shoot! Well, for y'all, it was a full month. That's why I'm saying this a month because all I okay. So I bas it basically what technically wasn't a full month. Okay, what happened was the incident happened on August 11th. So obviously, and I was in a hospital till August 18th, 
right? So, obviously, while I'm in the hospital, I'm not going to put up no episode of Birth Says. That's crossing the limit. Like, sometimes you have to have a limit, right? Like, I'm not going to set up a camera and, and be filming Birth Says in the hospital. We're not doing that. So, yeah. So, I was like, come September. That was my idea. Like, come September, the second Monday of September, I'm going to do Birth Says. So, that was September 13th or whatever the case may be. So, that was just me. That was just what I wanted to do. Uh, whatever and I was just kind of like not talking about it not saying what happened that's just really weird and because you know whatever like you like but that was me like and it does take strength it does take strength to get up every day and still deal with shit like I be looking around at a lot of things and I'm just like yo I don't motherfuckers really don't fucking get it like real talk like I be really like well I be like, I don't even know how the fuck I'm doing it sometimes. And I'm dead ass. Like, but I be so dead ass. Like, I be, I'm so dead ass right now. Like, I just, like, I don't, if y'all get what I'm saying, like, sometimes even I don't understand how I'm doing it. But I, I believe there's a guy. Like, those things, those are the type of things that are really make you say, it gotta be high being. For me to wake up every day, you know what I'm saying? And just be that girl. <laughs> realistically and there's so much other shit I'm doing besides what says but I, like I said I can't give you everything that is like unfreaking believable <laughs> I'll be like yo who who am I and I'm just like hey whatever whatever you can tell me to do I'm gonna do it and I'm doing it and I'm cool with it you know what I'm saying so you know strength is it's 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 um dope but I don't what is weak oh damn you can't talk about strength if you ain't gonna talk about weakness ah I, I don't like that because you know why but I, I, I see what I could do I see if I could dabble into weakness because I feel like everybody is so different and I feel like your life and circumstances might teach you to be strong and to move on differently i won't say quickly because i don't know what quick is for moving on the, i don't think there's a real timeline and then there's some people too like all right for instance well maybe people did i don't know like for instance um like wendy williams mother passed and she dead just kept doing the wendy williams show and i feel like nobody ain't really saying nothing about that like like i feel like maybe people were saying it but it wasn't really discussed or Oh, but P. Diddy, he don't really do much. Like, I feel like things be happening to celebrities that be mad traumatic. And they be getting up and living their life. And don't nobody say, like, question it. You get what I'm saying? Like, niggas just be like, alright. Like, so why can't a normal person do that? You get what I'm saying? Uh, but being a celebrity requires an extreme amount of emotional strength. Strength. Period. So, <laughs> Is it, that's how you know emotional strength is real is if you look at a celebrity somebody who's constantly scrutinized every day and just they just constantly working like me for me for instance I do versus once a week and I just feel like putting on makeup putting on clothes getting on camera setting up the camera like all of that stuff is a lot and even when I like take pictures and stuff I think it's a lot so imagine a celebrity that literally gets up almost every day because they'll do like a show right and then they'll do a photo shoot and then they'll do an interview and then they'll do another interview and then they'll do another like they'll do so much in one day then they'll go fly out and go do a performance and it's just like whoa and mind you they're getting fly for all the shit they constantly change their outfit they get changing their hair and yes they have a team but it's still the the uh of it it's, sometimes it's not about and people don't get that. It's not about how like you getting your makeup done and doing your makeup and doing your hair. It's about like why like this shit mad annoying. Like even though I look good, it's a lot. And I think about that like a Beyonce. Like people like try to, but like I could tell like she's like a machine. Like imagine and, and people celebrities who go on tour like they just get up every day, put on the makeup, dance, sing, boom, 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 change outfit, do a flip. Every night, every day, every different, every night, different city. Like, that's fucking nuts. That takes strength. Like, period. Like, 
that shit is fucking nuts. Like, respectfully, that shit is fucking nuts. Or whatever the case may be. But, um, you know. Like I said, I feel like they don't get questions on, you know, their emotional um, strength. Or whatever the case may be. Like, but emotional strength is real. And like I said, let me the link. Sorry, I'm looking at the window. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I feel like um, you can't talk about strength unless you talk about weakness. And can you be emotionally weak? Fuck yeah. And I think um, it can happen momentarily. You know, it can happen randomly. Like a certain any situation. Cause you, you, some people even say that. Isn't that isn't that like a term? Like I am emotionally weak. <laughs> like I feel like I said that before. <laughs> I be saying shit be terms, and it just be things that I say. But you could be emotionally weak. Shit be draining. Maybe you've been through bad shit in your life. And today, like, it could be it could be situational as well. Like, you having a bad month and then something really bad happened by the end of the month. Yeah, you might not react the same. Or maybe everything bad is happening so closely together. And that's what people don't consider is, like, how things are happening. How things are going. Because maybe... You know, somebody who, who isn't being 100% not able to get up on any best um, for six months. Maybe this situation has happened too many times. Or maybe mad shit was popping off before that big ass incident happened. And it's like, they feel in that moment like their life is fucked up permanently. Like, you ever been like that? Like, where you felt like mad bad shit was happening back to back to back? And it's like, what the fuck? Like, did somebody put a hex on me or whatever the case may be? So, that could fuck up your emotional strength too, in some ways. Um, can people be emotionally weak? Now I'm asking that question because I feel like, for me, oh, that might be, I might have to try lightly on what I say. <laughs> Cause I got something I wanted to say. Sorry guys. I got something I wanted to say. But it's kind of like. Uh, should I. Can I say that? I was going to say. If you just like get up. Even if you 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 quit your job, whatever. Let's say you don't get out your bed. I feel like the fact that you you went to sleep. And you woke up the next day. And you kept crying. And like you, you here today still breathing. That's your strength. And there's no timeline on emotional strength. Like the fact that you decided to deal with your shit. And you still fucking here. I don't give a fuck if it took you six months. If it took you a year. If it took you two years, three years, five years. The fact that you're still here. Still standing. I think that takes strength. I think I think that's that you. If you're here today, you're not emotionally weak. If you are here and you are breathing. And you chose to do that shit. You. You emotionally, I think, I, th I don't think, I wouldn't consider you weak. I would feel maybe, like, there just should be a spectrum. You know how they do one out of five? Maybe, you know, take you a year to two, three years. Maybe you're weaker than most. You're not as strong as others. You know how, like, like when you go to the gym, you know, you only could lift five or ten or twenty or sixty. For me, you know, my strength went down dramatically. I've had too many surgeries in my abdominal area. <laughs> I only can lift about five, ten max, ten barely. <laughs> and then there's people who can lift sixty. You get what I'm saying? Seventy, a hundred, two hundred. I think, you know, people can lift, you know, a lot of weight. So you know, there is limit limits to strength, right? Um, so I just feel like you're not weak. You may be on a spectrum of low, you know. And that's cool. Like, as long as you still here, like, you still doing your thing. I think that speaks volumes, period. Like, I think that just, just being here. Like, that's why I think we big ups. People who, who live to 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 85, 80, shit, 70. Seven, bitch, maybe even 60 at this point. A cute 50. You did 50 years of this shit. <laughs> 50 years young. I'm sorry. 50 years young. 50 years young for me. But 50 years is a long. A long a, a, it's a it's long, but it ain't long. Long as 80, 70. Bitch. That's why I, long life is so praised. Because it's not. This life ain't easy to live long one. Because anything could pop up at any moment. And number two, it's just like. 
life is fucked up. Like any at any moment, shit could happen. I mean, and now I get why people say like. When you 80, you've been through some shit. You know how people be like, they lived life, honey. She's lived a life. You know how many people pass it, but like, they have lived, they have seen it all. You know how people say that? And like, I was realizing that like last week, and I almost jumped into it last episode, but I always try to make sure I don't stray out of topics. But like, I be like experiencing so much at like 29, I feel like. And I'm just like, bitch, what's next? Like, and now I can understand why people say that term that, you know, She's lived. I can oh she. I can imagine the things she's she's seen it all. You know what I'm saying? Because like that's crazy. Like life is like a fucking shit show. And then people also pass every day. So it's like they've lived to see death. They lived to see mad life. They lived to see arguments. Like they see mad shit. Like when you live that long, you seen too much shit, son. Like you seen decades, you seen you seen transitions. Like old ass people seen when the first computer came out. Maybe not the first. Don't don't quote me. But like they seen the computers. Then they see the computers now. Then they used to have them big ass big back TVs. Now they see flat screen TVs. Now they see smartphones and like you literally live to see so much. Then they see social media and it's like what the fuck. They get to see so much, you know. I, I really, I always pray I have a long life. I be telling God, I, I have this thing I say. I say 115 chicken bean because I want to live until 115. <laughs> I'm dead. I'm dead. At, I'm one of those people who want to live long as fuck. Like, I'm going to fuck if I'm, like, old and raggedy. Like, I want to see mad shit, son. So, I always, I, I am not one of those. I will speak life into this world. I want to live to 115 chicken bean. That's what I call it. <laughs> Like, so, yeah. People who old as hell, they got a lot of strength because they seen a lot of shit and they been through a lot of shit. I don't give a fuck. Like, if you, you live 80 years, you probably done, you, you have been through enough. You probably done had to slap out five motherfuckers. Oh, my God, child. What? Yes. Yeah, but. <laughs> Let me read the characteristics, the seven characteristics that this article said that um emotionally uh strong people have so seven seven characteristics of emotionally strong people so it says oh i scroll down a little too much okay emotionally strong people are less discouraged by setbacks and disappointments all right let me speak a little briefly on that i feel like see this this goes in terms with life too just experience life like for me you know, around the pandemic, a lot of people's getting laid off or whatever. People was like losing their money or whatever. For me, I kind of was a little stressed because I was pregnant at the time. So I was like, fuck, I'm about to have a baby and I don't got no money. But also, you know, I was kind of treading, treading through and I still am. You know, because I have experience quitting a job. I experienced going through mad jobs. I have experience being broke in, in, in very short intervals. So, for me, like, and I remember me and my friend was talking about this shit. Like, this unemployment shit, like, come on now. Like, me and my friend was talking about this shit. Like, we, we acting mad chill, but it's a lot of people who can't handle it. Like, they was like, oh, my God, I'm on unemployment. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, me, I was like, Macy's called me, and they was like, we gonna have to let y'all go. We letting go. People, they, the bitch, I, I don't want to get into what they did. I said, okay, I mean. You, bitch, you, you, you want me to cry? Because I ain't going to cry. Like, I don't know what you want from me. I was like, okay, what's up? So she was like, yeah, but this person is hiring. Blah, blah. So I had, I was like, all right, cool. At least they give giving recce's or whatever. They was like, this is how you apply for unemployment. They sent us a little letter. Let us let unemployment know it's legit. And I was just like, all right, moving on. Like, But I know a lot of people did not react that way. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. You know what I'm saying? I, for me, I think that and it wasn't discouraging it was uh, it, i'm not gonna pretend like losing your job is not upsetting it's like fuck it was more of like a fuck like but it's like okay like it was like you get what i'm saying like people be getting mad depressed it, it's a lot i'm not gonna pretend like it's not emotionally draining yes it was emotionally draining yes it was it was but it wasn't I didn't feel like I couldn't get back up from it like it wasn't I, I can't explain like it's it, it 
I think, like I said, I think emotional strength really is just, is just a life thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, are more adaptable to change. <laughs> Wait, I'm starting to think. Wait, hold the fuck up. Hold the fuck up. You know what? Let me read all of them. Are able to recognize and express their needs. Okay. Focus on getting around a hurdle rather than on the hurdle itself. Okay. Can learn from mistakes and criticism. Tend to see the larger perspective in a challenging situation. Hmm. Are able to recover more quickly from emotional wounds such as failure or rejection. Alright. This. Oh my god. I hope this podcast is not long. This episode. I don't know. This. Oh shoot. This is starting to make me feel some type of way. Like I'm starting to feel like emotionally strong people is just people who just been through bad shit. <laughs> and they just like. Well bitch. What's up? Like, I feel, I, that, that's what that should sound like to me because when I read all of them, I, I, able to adapt to change, but bitch, I've been through too many changes, okay? Like, I done seen man change, so now I'm able to attack. Um, I'm able to recognize and express their needs. Sometimes, um, uh, so, some people would say, you know, at my job, I was very expressive. Uh, I don't, I, I don't, I, I, I can't, I don't know. I don't know how that really, I mean, it could be, you know, they, they could, I think the part where you could recognize your needs is just so most of the time. Like, because a lot of people can't even do that. Um, focus on getting around a hurdle. That, I feel like everybody should be like that. But, you know, not everybody's like that. Like, oh, bitch, you want to stay on a hurdle or you want to get out? Like, I, I be looking around like, how the fuck I'm going to get out of this shit? <laughs> this bitch. <laughs> This sounds like some trauma shit. This shit, emotionally strong people, like theoretically, it's just people who just been through mad shit. I'm, I'm fucking convinced. Like I, that makes mad sense too, cause a lot of people who've been through mad shit, they're really, they're really people you think are um stoic and stuff like that. A lot of people who've been through so much, they do have a tendency tendency to be very emotionally strong because they like bitch what else go what's what's up who next who wanna fight like that's the type of time you really gotta be on like when you when you've been through so much or like or if you experience something constantly you get what i'm saying like i said i already experienced quitting and losing and doing this, so now it's like whatever but you gotta be careful as well with that because um the other thing with being too numb to things, you could get too used to things. So, to me, all right, let's say for instance, losing job. Yeah, if you lose a job and you quit a job and you're used to it so you don't give a fuck, you should give a fuck. Let's, in the terms of, okay, you need to sit back and evaluate and say, why am I always quitting my job? Why am I always losing my job? Why am I always getting laid off? Obviously, with COVID, you know... You lost it because of COVID. But, like, for the most part, what happened in prior situations? You know what I'm saying? What What is it that you can change? A lot of people can't do that. Um, does that require emotional strength to be um, uh, insightful? To be able to sit back and be like, okay, to reflect? Okay, maybe. I think so. But but that's what gets scary because some people who so used to just, like... It, that, no, I'll say it. Like some people, like women who 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 are in an abusive relationship, they get with another man, and the man hit them, and then another man, and, and they feel like, oh, this is what niggas do. No, 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 no. Let's step back. Let's come, come here. That's not what they're supposed to do. You get what I'm saying? Like some people are so used to terrible things, or like they feel like it's normal, like they normalize it. I don't think you should normalize things. I do think that you know when you go through shit. Too much, too often, yes, you that'll build your character, it'll make your skin really thick. But you also have to say, okay, what can I do differently? You know what I'm saying? For me, you know, some things you you don't know. You don't know. You could you could do your best and you know shit still get fucked up, you know. Some things are so uh unique, like health, right? Medical things is like those things you can't really fix but so much because like I said last week, you know, you could lose weight and the shit still, you still, you still got problems. Your problem's still there, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
you, you can't change everything, all right? Like, maybe some things you could change, like, okay, my lungs is fucked up. Maybe I should put down the cigarettes. You know, like, little things, you know. So, yeah, emotional strength does come from your past. It leaks in. But we also need to figure out how can we um, avoid things, too as well like I want to make sure that 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 that's spoken but you know I think now you know look at that I think strength is just um it's something you pick up and sometimes you may not know that you are emotionally strong or why like for me I really don't know why <laughs> I'm emotionally strong um I don't I really don't actually I I, I say I really don't like I know for certain aspects of my life why but I don't know why I am like that in general which is kind of cool and kind of bad is is it something is it something that you need to know I don't know so I could be wrong you know that it's all about what you've been through in your past because I don't even know why I'm the way I am <laughs> I really don't um you know I don't know that's so, now see now y'all got me thinking I don't got time to think I do got time <laughs> but I just don't want to think about it but yeah you know for the strong there's nothing wrong with being strong for the people who like to shun people who are strong there's nothing wrong with somebody being strong there's no way to move on from things there's no time no time frame on how to move on from things or how to you know change um being strong is dope. Strong should not be canceled. When you say strong, make sure that you put it at the end. <laughs> That's my recommendation. Don't say be strong. Don't give that as a as an advice or a strengthy thing. Like I, I wouldn't recommend that be your first thing you, that come out your mouth. That's the only reason why it sounds bad. And yeah, being being strong is dope as fuck. Like what's up? Like yes. And yeah, that is another episode of Bird Says and I want you guys to subscribe leave a comment if you stay to the end thank you you're you're like whatever you're like dope you're like yes um like comment subscribe if you're watching on YouTube if you're not watching on YouTube you could definitely go over to YouTube okay and type in Bird Says and hit the subscribe button for me um if you're streaming leave a review leave five stars hello good morning Keep listening. Press the share button. Share, share, share. Okay. If you see um like my promo, follow me on Instagram, underscore Instagram. When you see my promo, share my promo. <laughs> I'm here for the end part of the video. And yeah, just and follow me on Instagram because I do a lot on Instagram, you know. I share quotes and stuff. Um, I do Insta stories. You get more a glimpse into me. So yeah, I will see you guys when next week